with RBG, we can um, we can look at, at how this system works and how she managed to play a major role in getting some really fundamental things changed in her lifetime. Um, and and look at the ways in, in which she did it and, and stuff like that. So to get into it, first of all, her nickname that she, with two, she's become kind of a, a famous figure. Um, some would say a feminist icon. Some would say it's broader than that um, in terms of standing up for just the idea of, of equal rights for all people um, is the Notorious RBG, RBG. Obviously taken off of Notorious B.I.G. Um, who's from... Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And so when Billy's also from Brooklyn, for those who aren't familiar yet, and and I just want to say that uh, there's this fascinating moment where, you know, obviously when, when you call this 80-something-year-old tiny white woman judge character who, you know, is, is pretty soft-spoken and stuff, and you compare her to um, a braggadocious, over-the-top... Uh, rapper like Notorious B.I.G. The size difference between the two of them, he's probably two and a half times heavier than she is, I'm sure <laughs> was, you know? So I mean, there's right. like obviously all these these contrasts. But one of the interesting things, so she's interviewed about, about this and she says, well, actually we do have things in common. And there's this eruption of laughter, right? Like, ha, ha, ha. Like she's obviously making a joke. She's like, no, we're both from Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know. And and, and, and that's uh, like what did one- you think about that? I think it's I think it's hilarious. Why the laughter? You know, I think we we why we, the laughter? We pick we pick two things, and you know, it's it, especially the most superficial, useless things. You know, we pick things like height, mm. and as an artist, I recognize like silhouette is important. You know, when you look at someone's silhouette, we immediately make a ton of assumptions about their capacity to kill us. You know, versus you know, these are mm. sort of really base things that are rooted in. Um, our evolutionary history so Mm -hmm. we go oh i don't know skin color without a doubt height um silhouette and so you look at these two no there's nothing no they're both from brooklyn they're both human and they're both wordsmiths they're both wordsmiths wordsmiths. yeah exactly like um i mean uh we can get crazy we can go for days i mean they both have to eat several times a day you know what i mean (laughs) perhaps different perhaps different amounts perhaps different different amounts perhaps um Uh uh-huh so we can go on for days, but yes, they're both brilliant wordsmiths, and uh, and so that you know that's and awesome. She's, she's from Flatbush. Um, what what does Flatbush mean to you? What like uh, does every neighborhood in Brooklyn have like an identity? Would you think about something when you hear Flatbush? Like what? When I hear Flatbush, I think of the uh, the taxis, yo. Flatbush, Flatbush, Flatbush. That's a big thing when you get on. Fl- <laughs> now I don't know if that's a thing anymore, right? I don't know if that was a thing. Oh, even. it's like a legal taxi line, right? Exactly. It's like a, or an underground taxi line. Exactly, exactly. Um, mm. And it was just people with so vans. So it would just be cheaper. It would be cheaper. It would be cheaper. It'd be like a dollar. You'd get on. It'd be a dollar, okay. and they would take you. So you get on this van, and there'd be like twenty people in the van in the back as well. They're supposed to seat like eight, um, and then they had a little like they had a sliding door with a rope on it, so that you know he's in the driver's seat and the doors over there. So he had a rope and he'd pull the thing the thing in. And then you just go on this mm. ride and just drop off people. And Flatbush was always... Oh, the driver would work the door yeah. with a rope. Yeah, because he was by himself no for the most part. Unless he wow. had, you know, Yeah, sometimes he had another person. Okay. But these guys, I mean, these people are just hustling, yo, you know? So so we're talking about, with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, one yeah. of the um, 10 most famous residents of Flatbush history. The top three are settled, by the way. She's not in the top three. The top three most famous residents of Flatbush are, without a doubt... Mario and Luigi from Mario Brothers and Bugs Bunny. So the creators of all three, the creators of all three. So in the Super Mario Brothers movie, they live in Flatbush. And then you Bugs Bunny, Mel Blanc, the creator of Bugs Bunny said he he made Bugs Bunny's accent after a Flatbush accent. So these <laughs> these three, three of the most famous fictional characters of the 20th century, Mario, Luigi, and Bugs Bunny are all from Flatbush. I mean... I guess sounds like Bugs Bunny's voice was done after Brooklyn, uh, you know, Brooklyn person. Maybe not. <laughs> we didn't say his origin story was Brooklyn. That's one. So these are these are weird. I would pick all three of these apart. All right. Then the first two, you're picking. Okay. You're picking 
that movie as like the representation for like the canon of of like Mario Brothers. Like it's, that, I mean, you got to take it all in. What you're gonna say? The movie's a liar. Like they, they just invented that this movie thing. is a liar. Mario and Luigi that are from Flatbush. The game is not clear, right? The game, the game, it's like they just they just the game starts. Where they, they get fall those the ridiculous accents from? Where they get those ridiculous accents from? Over the top. <laughs> well, stereotype obviously there's accents. an Italian. There's an Italian connection here. Um, gotcha. But,